Professor Worglies here. We just took a look at what a class is and what a prototype is, what properties and methods are based off of that prototype. These are all things you're going to want to know for the exam. Okay, properties are going to be the variables. Methods are going to be the functions. Okay, you want to know what a prototype is, what a property is, what a method is. And now we're going to run this program. So I need to wait till the DOM has finished loading. So I'm going to use the jQuery ready function. Okay, this is a shorthand for that function. Once the DOM has finished loading, I'm going to create a new advertisement. Okay, by creating a new instance of the advertisement class. Now, this is the advertisements class as well as the constructor. Okay, so you see there's no parameters here. And once I create a new instance of it, I'm going to have access to its prototype, which has a function called retrieve. Okay, so using this instance, I can call my advert instance, that's my advertisement. And I can call the retrieve function. You'll see brackets knows what function I want to call. I do the dot notation, and it knows right now I only have one method. I don't have any properties. All I have is the retrieve method because I built that based off of the object's prototype. So I can call the retrieve method, and the retrieve method takes one parameter. Okay, it's going to be a method that's going to be called after the get request has been successful or not. So I'm going to pass in that function, which is on data receive. You're going to see that down here. Okay, on data receive is a function that takes in a parameter, which is going to be the data passed back from the get request. Now, what's cool about JavaScript is I don't need to specify that parameter here. I'm going to call the retrieve function. That's right here. The retrieve function executes a get request. It sends a get request to info.php. Info.php sends back, you just want a million dollars. So when the get request is successful, it's going to call this function. The function is passed in as a parameter, which is right here. This is the function's name, on data received. So it's going to call on data received here, which is this function. And it's going to pass in the data from the get request, which is right here. And an alert is going to be displayed with the data received from that get request. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to run it. Make sure you upload your code to the server. Come back to the browser. Okay, go to your server's public DNS. If you have your AWS console open, it'll be this address right here. Then you'll do forward slash lectures. Once you do lectures, you can see the directory structure. We're in data retrieval in number one. And you'll see this here. You just want a million dollars. Now, if you're on any website and you see this message, you just want a million dollars, do not click anything. Most likely it's a virus and you click OK or click receive my money, and then a virus gets planted on your machine. However, we coded this so we know this is not a virus. So you can click on OK here. The alert will disappear, and you'll see that that code is successfully running. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a new instance of this class. This is the constructor. It's right here on the right side of this statement. So I'm creating a new instance of the advertisement class which is stored here in advert. Once I have an instance, I have access to all the prototypes, which is the properties and the methods. Right now I only have one method. So I do advert dot, and then the retrieve method pops up, and I need to put the functions name that I wanna call after the get request has been successful. So I did, I put on data received. So I call the retrieve function, it runs the get request, sends it to info.php, once the get request comes back, it's going to call the function passed as a parameter, which is on data received. The get request has a parameter, which is the data from the server. And then that's going to be displayed in an alert. Now, why did I do it this way? This seems very complicated for what I'm trying to accomplish here. Well, what's nice about this is I can create several advertisements. I can create several advertisements without changing any of the code. And I can call that get request 
and execute different functions based off of which advertisement I'm doing. So I could use this same get request for several advertisements and call different on success methods based on what's passed as a parameter. So for this small program, it may be more complicated, but if you view a larger program, it's gonna make things easier because I'm programming in a dynamic way. Okay, the retrieve function has a dynamic parameter and the data pass back is gonna be a dynamic parameter. As well as I can create any number of advertisements without changing any of the code. Now this is how you should be thinking for your final project. Let's say you wanna have an advertisement that gets displayed on your website. There's no reason to create code for each advertisement. You can have an advertisement class or an advertisement template. You make a get request, you get the advertisement, and then you display it on the screen without changing any of the code. And that's how you should be thinking for your final project. We have more examples to come. We're gonna get a little bit more complicated with the advertisements. So stick with Professor Wergelies and we'll see you in the next video.